Hello, and welcome back to my studio in Midway, BC. I'm excited to share the results of a project I've been working on here for a couple of months, the constrained membrane absorber. When treating a room, you typically start with broadband porous absorption. This comes from using materials like rock wool and fiberglass. Broadband absorption is really only effective down to 100 hertz or so. Below that, we turn to other technologies like membrane absorbers. A membrane absorber uses a membrane material, such as mass-loaded vinyl, over an airtight cavity, which is typically filled with insulation. The depth of the cavity, amount of insulation, properties of the insulation material, surface density of the membrane material, damping properties of the membrane material, and overall dimensions of the membrane absorber can all affect how it behaves. Most rooms I design nowadays include membrane absorbers. The treatment building phase of my own studio here started off with building a number of membrane absorbers which sit on the back wall and ceiling. In most rooms I design, these membrane absorbers then get covered with other layers or other panels that get placed in front of them. In many cases, we end up constraining the membrane with the materials placed in front of them. Porous materials, like insulation, change the acoustic impedance seen by the membrane and can drastically affect the behavior of the membrane. A membrane absorber tuned to 60 Hz can end up with its absorption peak at a completely different frequency when there's insulation placed in front of it. My room designs will often have membrane absorbers which have the same build specifications, but end up behaving completely differently based on where they're placed in the room and what layers are subsequently placed in front of them. Up until now, fully constraining a membrane system was a challenge in panel-based designs. So I mostly have worked with partially constrained systems where one panel sits in front of another and an open gap is left between the panels. Over the past few months, I've been testing countless different configurations of panels with different ways of constraining the system, which has led me to the development of the constrained membrane absorber. While there are theoretical ways to predict how these devices behave, how they behave in practice is quite different. The constrained membrane absorber designs I've developed will be used in the rooms I design with plans provided for building them. Alternatively, if you're working on a room design with me and don't want to build them on site, they can be ordered from Music City Acoustics in Nashville, who are able to ship them across the US, or from Drew Allsbrook, who's able to manufacture them in LA. These are unlike anything currently available on the market. They bring the technology from my full studio buildouts to smaller scale panel-based designs. The various configurations I've come up with for this panel range from 13 to 22 inches thick, targeting different frequencies in the bottom end. The constraining system allows you to target much lower frequencies than you otherwise could with separate porous and membrane absorber panels. Having said that, there are certain trade-offs in the performance, so the constrained membrane absorber isn't always the right tool for the job. My room designs will still continue to use separate membrane and porous absorbers where appropriate. Thanks for joining me, and stay tuned for some of the other projects I've been working on here in the studio.